Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I am so excited today because I am talking to one of my favorite Eurovision artists. It is Margaret and we're about to be in 2024, so 10 years ago. Does it feel like Eurovision was like almost 10 years ago for you? Yeah, it really does. <laughs> you know, sometimes people can say, oh it feels like it was yesterday but it, it really doesn't i've uh i'm a mom now i have two children you know and and uh, so much has happened in my life so absolutely it i remember everything vividly but still it feels like it's 10 years ago when you think back to eurovision 2013 and kind of look back at eurovision 2023 this year what to you kind of stands out as like the biggest thing of like, oh my goodness, I wonder what it would have been like if I had had that experience in looking at the show and whatnot? Um, hmm. It's, it has, you know, it's still the core of Eurovision is still the same, which I'm, I'm very happy that, that it, even though it gets bigger, even though um you know it changes a little bit from year to year it's the the core is still there and i i love that i love that it's so you know weird and so quirky and also so uh like it's it, there there's so many like highs and lows and so many opinions and and i love that that weird universe that is eurovision you know there's nothing like it in on the planet uh, so I'm happy that it's kind of the same and it feels the same when I was there and when I see it I, it kind of makes sense uh, but I I love that it's getting bigger I've, I've always thought that this is such a unique show such a unique uh, thing for Europe especially since it's we don't have, you know, like Super Bowl or something that kind of like binds us together and brings everyone in front of the TV. It's just this show that kind of like gathers Europe in a way. So, yeah, it's charming and fun. You know, Eurovision is getting bigger. And this year there was a global vote. So this is the first time that I actually could vote at Eurovision. <laughs> What do you think if you had had like a global vote when you were participating at Eurovision? What do you what do you think of the idea of letting some other folks now? I mean, of course, it's you know, we don't have a jury or anything like that. But just what do you think of the fact that now people outside of Europe can actually, you know, kind of make their voices heard a little bit? Well, well I was a little bit shocked, you know, that it's kind of like opened up. And I, I, I feel like that's gonna happen more and more also uh, and the US is getting more interested Australia has always been you know like interest interested um, but um, I, I I like that I, I like I think that it's gonna make the comp competition bigger and I think that um, that would be a really great thing for the artists that participate there because there aren't that many arenas that's not like American or or British that that you know a German artist or like a Norwegian artist can can promote themselves. So I think that it's going to make it more global and I, and I like that. Now we talked about some of the changes and it being more global. I mean we did have a little experiment, it's not happening anymore, at least as of now, called the American Song Contest. <laughs> and then Canada apparently will be having their own version of the song contest. And then uh, Latin America is going to have like their own brand of Eurovision. So, you know, maybe we don't have to participate in Eurovision, but maybe there is hope that sort of little models things that sort of mirror the eurovision song contest will begin to pop up and and i might connect it because technically i mean norway y'all actually have a national selection not all the countries at eurovision do so what do you mm. think of us maybe having like our own little mini eurovision iterations <laughs> well i don't know i feel like it you know the the whole uh, charm and quirkiness is a bit that it is Europe, you know, 
um but it, i don't know I, I, it's hard to picture it only because you know as a norwegian we we've watched this show since we were children and our parents watched it as children so that it's changing so much so quickly is kind of yeah it's hard to adapt <laughs> maybe i'm getting old i don't know but uh <laughs> um I don't know. I, I like I like everything that can make your vision bigger. I guess so. So um, I think that everyone should be welcome to join as long as it kind of keeps its uh, European core. And I would love it if more American songwriters could uh, could uh, maybe be more interested in participating in Eurovision because that that is actually possible now. You don't have to be like European to write the song. I think it's like 50% of the act needs to be uh, from the uh, original country. So it can be the artist or the songwriters sort of. Yeah, I, I I think I like the idea of that. And and I, I think that Eurovision is such a great platform for artists because I do think in the Eurovision community, we are pretty open to just music and stuff that's new. So, so I think that's amazing. So kind of in the same vein of that, I mean, let's talk about your music. Let's talk about what you're up to now. So I know you're a mom, but if I'd say, so outside of being a mom, what would you feel like is really your main creative outlet? And yeah, like, yeah, what are you up to? Well, the latest years I've been actually releasing songs in my native um, language, which is completely new to me and something I thought I would never do. But uh, uh, after being an artist, you know, I started when I was 17 in the Norwegian Idol. Um, I've been so I've been an artist for 19 years and and uh, after a while I think that the inspiration for writing songs can get a bit empty so you have to you have to dig uh, deep into the chest to see wh what what can excite me to write the song and then changing to my native language uh, was uh, was very very exciting I'm I'm still not sure if I'm going to like write in Norwegian forever um, but uh, that's been like the latest years with the pandemic and everything I've released a few singles and that's been go going really well and also I you know I, I work as a DJ so I uh, <laughs> I have like lots of gigs where I like leave my kids at home put on like a leather suit and go play some music for uh, usually it's like pride events and stuff like that and I and I love it I love the like joy that a dance floor can bring and it's kind of connected I think also to to your vision and and the joy and the glitter and the sparkle that that brings I I, I get very like I want to go where the joy is basically so DJing is also very important to me and so much fun well i don't dj but i am a mom and i too you know sometimes put on my leather suit and go out and leave my daughter at home <laughs> yeah, <good point. laughs> um well i kind of want to pivot a little bit and talking about a little bit of your writing because i mean one thing that i love when i talk about norway at Eurovision, I love having conversations about Norway and really talking about their entries at Eurovision because I know, and I'm sure you know, Norway wants to win Eurovision soon. Like, I, I know it, I know it. Yeah. Would you ever consider like writing or submitting a song? Have you have you done that recently? I would say recently because I mean Norway's just on a really good track record. I would say at the song contest, you know, some countries would really rival uh, the the recent success that Norway has had. Uh, mm. And and so yeah, would you consider writing? And then um, I mean even consider performing again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I for me it's really important that it's a song contest you know uh, so uh what i what i'm thinking now is that i would love to participate in eurovision again because that's where the joy is for me you know it's like so much positive energy and still 10 years later people write me every day 
about my song so it's been it's been such an adventure and i would never like why wouldn't i go back to that but it's still you know um the the national contest that you have to win to go to eurovision so uh if ever there was a song that came to me in my inbox or you know <laughs> in like um uh some compa- capacity when i'm in the studio myself um i would i would love to do it but it has to be it has to be the song you know it has to be like uh, wrecking ball or chandelier you know those kind of tracks that are just like boom it just hits you in the face and you know it can be a winner it can like touch people's heart and it needs to be something like that and i i i haven't been actively searching for it but i'm very very much open to seeing if maybe uh maybe i could participate again but yeah it's all about the song i agree with you it definitely is all about the song but it's also eurovision it's a television show so i i have to ask do you ever look back and i'm your performance is pretty like perfect to me <laughs> like i love the styling the hair everything the camera angles like everything felt really right but now you know with your vision having you know it's advanced we've got new technology new tools and stuff if you could go back and say like oh if i could change maybe like this one thing you know to modernize it maybe what would you change well there's a few things like there's there's like five things i would change like um I, I feel like the hair, um, the hair was kind of like, it got a bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And I feel like I kind of like my hair a little bit better in the Norwegian, like the national um, competition. And I would, um, I would also like uh, change a little thing that we redesigned with the dress. Um, I would just like not redesign parts of it. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's it's good as it is. So it's not all about like changing what it was, but like actually keeping some of the things that was in the national competition. And then I would uh, I would definitely like have. I wish I had a bit more action in the end of my entry like um you know h- how um euphoria with Lorene, she she dances alone on the stage and it's like very um very simple you have the laser lights i love that performance but it's also so brilliant that there's a male dancer that comes in towards the end and just like whoa lifts it a little bit and and i i would love to have like maybe some sort of element like that like a surprise at the end so that you have yeah that you kind of i feel like that's also part of the 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 song contest that you need to like surprise and be creative and i feel like a good example of that is um finland uh this year that is like started in a box a sauna and it it was just like layers all and it was it was so good it was so brilliant i loved it and i would love to do something more creative Okay. Well, I love it. And I would love to have you back. I think other people who are watching this probably would love to have you back as well. And I I wanted to kind of touch on this. I mean, you were on a jury once, didn't you? You were on the Norwegian jury or more than once. I was was on the Norwegian jury once and then I've been a few years in the German one. Okay, wonderful. So I asked that because this year at Eurovision, we had no juries in the semifinal. And so I just wonder as a participant, you know, what did you think when you heard the news? Were you kind of feeling like, oh man, like the performers sort of need a jury or, mm-hmm. you know, now that we've sort of seen it play out, it's like, oh, well, maybe not. Like yeah. what, what the results ultimately were. What do you think? Oh, hmm. Good question. I'm, I'm like very, I don't I don't really know because I think sometimes the jury has helped the song contest from being like 
too silly you know sometimes the people can get a little bit not so serious about the vote and i love the the silly acts as well but i don't want like the most outrageous act to win every time i want the best song to win so i feel like that maybe that's where the jury comes in that it's it kind of keeps it keep has that this that kind of like bass quality of the song uh again finland is a good example of being like kind of in between there and would have won if if um if the people decided uh, and maybe it should have, you know, I love Laureen, but it's also like, it felt a bit weird at the end, didn't it? Like people were, the audience were like booing. And so there's, there's like, I'm, I'm conflicted about jury or not jury. I think sometimes it's needed. And sometimes like this year, it felt kind of refreshing that it wasn't there also in the semifinals. So it was like, hmm, what would it be like if it wasn't? there at all you know it was just the people's vote well I've always been consistent in my belief I I like a jury being there but I don't think it should be a 50 50 split I think it should be televote 60 jury 40 percent and I didn't honestly I I don't think I missed the jury in the semi-final I, I like I I kind of felt like okay like yeah we get to the big show and then the jury can kind of show up and and maybe equalize so to speak but but I don't know perhaps there are some countries that didn't make it through that would have been hoping on a jury so the the, the final was amazing this year like there was all of my favorites were there so yeah i i that's a really good solution i think you should run your vision <laughs> well you know i'm actually currently in geneva switzerland so maybe i'll just go knock on their door tomorrow that's what we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna go hello ebu it's me, it's me. i'm here i will fix everything yeah good yeah. <laughs> well, I think I kind of want to close out and think a little bit forward. I mean, because we already said Norway definitely wants to win Eurovision soon, and I will be here for it. What do you feel like? Yeah, what do you feel like Norway should try or maybe do that could possibly secure them that win? There's a few Norwegian artists that are very big right now that are, that I think it would be so much fun to see them in Eurovision, like. Uh, Aurora would be amazing, Aurora, uh, and uh, and also Sigri would be amazing to see in Eurovision. So so that would be like that would be my dream that like one of the the really big amazing female artists that are representing Norway out in the world would come home and represent us in the Eurovision. But uh, I think maybe like. Uh, you know, the, the Scan Scandinavian countries are very good with the whole dance, electro pop, but in the more melancholic, moody style. So I think we should like keep doing that. I think we're good at that. And I think that we shouldn't try too hard to be uh, the Vikings. You know, there's always like some sort of like like some some kind of uh, you know uh, souvenir shop uh, feeling when we try to do that and I think it's it's fine people the Vikings were from everywhere they weren't just Norwegian <laughs> and 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 it's not like really relevant let's just move on well, I think that that is wonderful advice and I know people will be following you, connecting with you. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. It was so nice.